not be identified, will not be managed properly, most of their lives will be limited lang kung ano lang yung kaya nilang gawin with their remaining vision. That's it. Okay? So, it, first of all, it's an irreversible visual loss. Doc, irreversible? Yes, irreversible. Cannot be uh, what back to 2020 vision, wala na. Okay? That's, that's one fact that we need to establish. Okay? And most people, when they hear irreversible vision loss, doon na nags start no, yung kanilang um, emotional, yung kanilang you know, uh, uh, emotional packages. Some of them might feel depressed, shocked, some of them might even feel angry towards other people kasi ganun lang nangyari sa kanilang eyes. So, what I'm saying is that it's not just vision, it's, it's more of like the overall well-being of that person. Okay? Uh, and we've already established this, the fact that it will affect the ability to perform the daily activities. Okay, next thing. Sino po ang nakakakilala ng chart na ito? Taas po ang kamay. Okay, nakabisado po ba ito nung last exam? <laughs> nakabisado? Hindi. Okay, baka nakatingin sa malayo. <laughs> so, ito po ay tinatawag ng Snellen chart. No? This is the most popular visual chart or visual activity chart that, that most people know. Uh, but, uh, just, just an FYI, hindi lang po ito ang chart na ginagamit namin. So, next time, makumunta po kayo sa inyong optometries at nagulat kayo iba ang chart nakapisado niya. <laughs> so, when we say best corrective visual acuity, again, we mean even with glasses, okay, even with the best lenses, even with contact lenses whatsoever, ang vision in the patient will only be up to here at the best, and that's it. Dok, saan dyan ang 2029? Yung 2029 sa baba ng red line, yan po yung dapat natin makita. Now, whenever we, we go for eye exams, dapat yan yung achieve natin so that we can say that we have 2020 vision or normal vision. Okay? So, yun po. Oh, ang dami na yun. Makabasuloy ko na ito next time. <laughs> okay, so, kabasuloy ko na. So, yan. Nagpalitay na may. Okay. Magulo kasi yung mali ko. Okay, so next time po, yeah, so just, just uh, ask your, your optometrist or eye doctor now, Doc, what's my visual acuity? So your doctor should advise you that it's 20 over 20. If not, then you might need to wear glasses, like that. So another possible um, condition for a person to be categorized as low vision is what we call your visual field loss. Okay, so when we say visual field loss, oh, uh, it means that uh, yung ating periphery, Yung ating paningin, no? uh, wala na po ito. So imagine, tingin po kayo sa katabi nyo, halimbawa, tingin sa katabi, imagine na nakikita nyo na lang po yung mukha niya. Okay, ayan. So the rest, wala na po yan. So may mga patient po tayo na possible, ganyan po ang kanilang vision. No? So, so tunnel vision po ang tawag dyan. Okay? Right. So, uh, that is no vision. Next, we discuss elements of vision. So, what do we mean by elements of vision? So, these items, okay, affects our vision. So, these items are present on uh, our, uh, our surroundings every day. So, tingnan niya natin at ano yan. So, first off, we have light. Okay, so we know that without light, vision is not possible. Okay, without light, vision is not possible. So, there are people, you know, who might experience, um, Difficulty with their vision kapag sobrang liwanag o kaya sobrang dilim. So possible pala yun. Kaya hindi pala pwede dapat puro maliwanag lang kasi minsan sobrang masakit sa eyes. So light sensitive people or as we say, we call it glare. Right? So next we have size. Okay, so we know that you know, for, for an object to be seen clearly, okay, to, to make it more visible, we may increase the size. And so, meron po ba dito? Ito, hindi ko, hindi ko na pagtataasin ang kamay. Meron po ba dito gumagamit ng phone? Pero nilalakihan yung text. Nilalakihan ng text. Para hindi ilayo. Ganyan lang. Okay, steady lang. Okay. So, size, di ba? Size. So, keep in mind, teachers, that there might be some students, no? Maybe present now or maybe in the near future that they might require larger texts for them to read. Okay? And then we have distance. 
So the basic rule for distance, like the general rule for distance is that once we move the object closer, it becomes more visible, it becomes larger. And so, ano po pang ibig sabihin ito? Ano mangyayari? So we mean, for us optometrists, no vision practitioners, we may use the elements of vision to improve no, the vision of our patients, no, uh, specifically for the students. So it means that there might be some advice coming from the eye care professional na dapat si student ko nakaupo sa first row for that student to see clearly. Uh, dapat po yung student gagamit ng large frame para makapagbasa ng maayos and stuff like that. I, so we have, you know, we have lots and lots of examples to, to, to provide, but for the interest of time, we will just, uh, you know, uh, mention some. Next, we have color. Okay, so there are cases where we may use different colors to emphasize or to maximize your, your objects. No? Uh, there are some people who might see red more, more uh, visible than the rest of the colors, then we use red. Contrast. Okay, so contrast means the ability to perceive no, your difference in, in colors or light levels, there's objects, and it, it's heavily linked to mobility or moving around. So may mga patients po, mayroon po mga visually impaired, hindi na nila ma-identify. For example, yung color ng table, halos same na brown na. But, no, um, if, if someone with poor contrast will look at the table, parang iisa lang siya. So that's what we mean by contrast, no? for example. And next is position. So we may move an object you know, within the visual field to make it more visible. So you push up. Okay? Now, these are the different visual functions that we need to see clearly, to see normally. No? So visual activity, for example, you need now in clarity of visual. That's what we you know, test when we do the, the static chart. Stereopsis, ito po yung depth perception, the ability to to, to see the depth, no, yung layo ng one object or another. Visual field, again, yung lawang ng paningin. Contrast sensitivity means the ability to perceive, again, yung different light levels sa objects, no, how dark, dark, black and white, or magat. Color vision, more than good at. Light adaptability. So, the ability to see clearly at different light levels. For example, sa conference room, po, clear ang vision, but how about when you go outside? Mag-a-adjust kaya agad yung eyes. Yan. Okay? And then visual perception is how we perceive things. So, again, this one, what do you commonly observe among your students who have vision problems? So, sabi nga natin kanina, medyo nagsasquid sila ng ganyan. Right? So, if you spotted a student squinting, right? so usually there you ask the student, malinaw ba yung paningin? Um, kailangan ba lumapit sa board? And then most likely, you know, the next best, best step there is to refer the student to an eye care professional and to have their eyes tested. So again, early intervention po is always, always better because from there, we can provide effective management. Okay, so these are just some, some of the samples. Um, I recommend you take a photo. Right? Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure if you will provide a copy, but these are examples of, of uh, behaviors, no? And then, what are the possible air, uh, elements of vision na affected? For example, bright color seen but no six shades of color. So, may problema siya sa color vision. Cannot read uh, small prints, no? Uh, may problema siya sa clarity ng vision. Therefore, we can increase the size. And both. So, para lang po, meron tayong clue, no? Paano po natin medyo uh, i-handle yung, yung ating student. Now let's go over the common causes of visual impairment. What are the possible conditions that might lead to visual impairment and in some cases even blindness? So first we have uncorrected refractive error. Ibig sabihin po yung hindi na nakapagsalamin, possible magulat, possible na magkaroon ng permanent visual impairment. Yes. Right? So when we say refractive error, um, when someone uh, when someone sees clear at, at near, but uh, blurry at far, we call that person as near sighted. And when someone sees clear at far, but having, uh, having trouble seeing at near, we call that person far sighted. Okay? Uh, 
Um, if someone po ang uh, kanyang response ay para may shadows yung mga text, meron po bang ganang feeling? Pag nakatingin sa malayo, para may shades o DHD. And then sometimes may headaches, okay? Um, most likely, the light inside the eye is scattered, okay? And, and it's possible for that person to have a stigmatism. Yan, okay po. So, yun po yung refractive errors. Right? So, we need to address contact lenses. May iba, Doc, pwede ba surgery? Laser, okay. Well, it depends. No, you have to be screened first. No, uh, for for us to find out. Uh, but but it's not for everyone. It it needs to have a proper assessment, muna. But yes, it is possible. Okay, congenital cataract. So imagine child being born. Okay, and then right there, then makita natin yung eyes. Meron na agad white sa gitna. So that's what we call congenital cataract. So yung lens inside the eye. It should be clear, but it's already opaque, white. So, sad to say, there are cases wherein yung intervention um, is already too late, no? masyado nang delayed, that that child you know, already um, suffered visual impairment. No? Instead na nakakabasa, sana siya ng text, ang nangyari, pinagbasa siya ng Braille. Later, I'm going to show you uh, what's the difference between visual reading in terms of speed. Right? So kasi po medyo um, affected po kumbaga yung kanilang learning doon. But again, congenital cataract, uh, it means that a child being born already has their lenses opaque. So it requires early intervention. Okay, papalitan po yung lente. And then from there, uh, we correct, no, we, we observe um, regularly. Retinopathy of prematurity. So if a child is, was born uh, prematurely, so kulang po sa buwan, kulang po sa time, there's a chance that their eyes will be affected. Paano pong affected? So yung eyes po natin sa back part of the eye, we have the retina. Okay, that is like the film of the eye. Right? So the retina should develop like normally over time, but in the case of retinopathy of prematurity, the retina you know, becomes damaged, and then eventually, depending on the, the, the case, the level, possible po na maging blind yung ating um, yung ating baby dyan, no yung student no so it depend again it depends on the stage right and then also yung early intervention is very very critical okay so bakit po natin kailangan malaman ito well for for awareness right maybe who knows okay maybe you might encounter a person a family who might be suffering from one of these conditions and then, you know, you might be the key to referring them to eye care professionals and getting management, no proper management. Stargardt's disease, more of sa macula po. When we say macula, yung central vision. Yan. So, tingin po muna sa akin. Yan. So, pag tingin sa akin yung central vision, right? so that's, uh, that's uh, where Stargardt's disease will be um, affected. No? So, ang mangyari po dyan, no, yung central vision po nung, nung tao will be impaired. Katulad po niyan, hindi makita yung gitna. Pag nakatingin, wala, walang muka. No? So possible po yun. And then, retinitis pigmentosa. So, ito po, kabaliktaran. Yung peripheral vision naman po, yung unti-unting nawawala. Alright? Um, let me give you an example. So, months ago, uh, there was... A teacher who visited RBI at Quezon City, and then that teacher, you know, reported that she's not seeing very well. But not very well. Vision is okay, but not very well. So it turns out that that teacher suffering from retinitis pigmentosa without, you know, without the assessment that hindi niya alam. So ang nangyari pala, naglalakad siya, hindi niya, parang nakakapa siya ng, ng foot ng steps niya dito kasi hindi niya na makita yung floor. So, ganun kalala po yung possible mangyari sa retinitis pigmentosa. Right? So, again, early intervention po, important po yan. Para po masimulan agad yung management. Matulungan natin yung mga kasama natin na may visual impairment. And glaucoma. Right? Raise of hands. Sino po dito ang aware? What is glaucoma? Raise of hands. Or maybe heard the word glaucoma somewhere. Ayun, meron po ako nakita. Thank you. Yung glaucoma po, ibig sabihin... Yung pressure po ng eyes, masyadong mataas in most cases, that it damages the optic nerve sa likod ng mata. Okay? Once the optic nerve is damaged, okay, it is irreversible. 
So yan po ang lagi kong sinasabi. Once the optic nerve is damaged, it is irreversible. Kasi may mga cases po, may sabi ng glaucoma, hindi pa nagpa-check. Next visit, bulag na. Okay, so ganun po ka grabe ang pwedeng mangyari. Right? Um, doc, ano yung bata? Okay, meron pong tinatawag na congenital glaucoma. Okay? Pagka panganak pala ng bata, mataas na agad yung pressure ng eyes and that might lead again to visual impairment or blindness. Okay? Um, how do we assess visual impairment cases and how do we provide and what management do we provide? Okay, so uh, low vision assessment says here the provision of low vision care for children needs to be integrated within eye care, education, and rehabilitation services. So let me pause there muna. So when we say low vision care, we mean it's not just nag-check kami ng eyes and that's it. So it needs to be integrated with how teachers are teaching the, that, that the student, okay? with how other professionals are helping that student. So that's what we mean by low vision care. So pang, pang kalahatan or overall well-being. So it's more of a holistic approach actually. And it needs to be accessible to all children. So it, this is one of the things that RBI really, uh, really advocates. No, the, the equal chances for, for everyone. So, ibig sabihin, yung chance for, for a normally sighted child right, should also be available for uh, a child with visual impairment. No? So, kung kaya magbasa ng normal, normally sighted child, then ano kaya ang pwede natin gawin para matulungan yung bata na may visual impairment so that he or she can catch up. Right? So again, equal chances for everyone. So low vision assessment starts with um, assessing the residual vision. Okay, so we want to know, ano ba yung vision? Okay? Correlate with the patient's social and educational needs. So usually when we start a low vision assessment, we ask uh, the student, we ask the parents, um, kamusta po yung vision? Okay? How, how are you doing with school? with uh, playing outside, with your hobbies. So, tinatanong po natin lahat ng ito so that we'll have a better understanding of how visual impairment affects the overall well-being of that person and even the families. Um, just to share with you po, uh, whenever we handle cases of children with visual impairment, ang pinaka na sa stress po dyan, most likely yung parents naman. Okay? Dok, makakakita pa ba yung anak ko? Uh, Doc, pwede ba palitan niyo yung mata niya? Palit ko yung mata ko? Grabe ang pagmamahal ng parents, no? So, that's, that's reality, right? So, that, that usually happens. And again, just to show the impact of visual impairment. So, important to take note of patient's ability to use vision for daily activities. Right? It's, that's very important. Determine the visual functions or elements of vision uh, um, related to the case. And test will be influenced by the patient's age and diagnosis. So, depende po sa case yung ating ginagawa. Hindi po siya yung typical sa optical shop wherein you just sit, machine, exam, bye-bye. No. Actually, in a low vision uh, assessment, ito po lahat ang ginagawa natin. Okay? If a normal eye exam lasts for about 30 minutes, like up max to up to an hour, ang low vision assessment po might last like the whole day and even kulang pa po yun. So, ganun po kabusisi yung ginagawa natin. Again, to understand yung case. No? So, mahaba po yan. I mean, if, if we have like another session, I would love to discuss these things with you guys. But uh, for the interest of time, we move on to the next. Doc, ano po yung mga possible management okay, uh, present for a person with, with low vision aside from glasses? First up, we have optical management. Okay. So, for optical management, magnifiers. Okay, so kung nakakita po kayo ng regular magnifiers sa national bookstore or other bookstores, parang ganun po. But in low vision, we have more powerful uh, magnifiers. Okay, some magnifiers come with, um, with regular lighting, yung kanyang sariling light. Others come in different forms. So, sobrang lakas ng lens to just magnify the texts. Again, depende po sa case yan. Non-optical, so aside from lenses, we do have other interventions, again, to maximize your remaining vision. We have large print. And so some students might require large printed materials for them to read. No? 
And even to write, minsan yung kanilang, kanilang uh, page, dapat po may lining na makapal para doon sila magsusulat kasi doon yung makikita nila. Without that thick uh, lining, it will not be possible for them to write like straight and it will be confusing for them. So, ano to, Doc? Ano yan? So, this is what we call typoscopes. Okay? So, typoscopes limit yung visual field. May tinatawag tayong visual clutter. Right? So, visual clutter simply means that it's so much, like it's, it's like too many texts all over that it's hard for you to focus. And sya. So, we need to have something that will block the rest of the images and then just focus on the line. And po, that's what we call typoscopes. And then this is a reading uh, guide. Okay? So, may ilalagay tayo na page no, with, uh, with available spaces and then that's where they write. Again, making it easier for them to write. Uh, and then this is a book stand. And so for posture. So in, instead po na ang bata nagbabasa na nakayoko ng ganyan, okay, if you introduce a reading stand, no, then you correct the posture, right? So imagine nakayoko ka ng ganyan for hours, yung strain sa neck, shoulders, and, and other body parts will be there. But with the reading stand, we will be able to correct that. It's right, still on the non-optical. So for those with light sensitivity, we recommend sunglasses or tinted lenses. All right? And then lamps, and then caps, and then good contrast sensitivity. All right? So management. Okay, so ano ba yung ginagawa natin? Ano ba yung available? Um, braille, uh, braille first, Braille. No? So yung Braille po natin, ito po yung tactile na, na set ng, ng language for, for people with visual impairment with blindness. So ito po yung kanilang way of reading, and even writing. So, number one, it requires training. Number two, it requires constant practice. So, si si uh, Ma'am Joyce, ayan, si teacher ng Braille. No? So, talagang tututukan nila yan. And then, we have white cane. Okay? It's for mobility. No? So, for people with, with severe visual impairment, they cannot walk by themselves. Then, you know, it's possible for them to get a white cane and then use that for mobility, for orientation. And so, para po, safe yung kanilang dadaanan kahit sila lang po mag-isa. Okay, so may proper technique po, may proper training for that. And again, it should be available for everyone. That's why we need to understand no, na talagang dapat ma-refer mo na sila. Yun yung first case. So, reading and writing efficiency. So, it, I think it's quite um, quite a known fact that for people with visual impairment, affected po ang reading and writing efficiency. So, the higher the visual impairment, the yung, yung more severe, then there is a higher chance that reading and writing efficiency will be affected. Okay? So, there are a number of ways to improve no, yung, yung kanilang reading and writing um, ability. Okay? So, for low vision devices, we may provide telescopes, magnifiers, uh, we may provide reading materials beforehand or, or electronic files. Nowadays po, very accessible na po ang technology with the use of cell phones, audio, so text-to-speech, marami na po yan. Read aloud what is written on the board. Right? Si teacher pwedeng i-read out loud or maybe have yung classmate, okay? si seatmate. Sige nga, basahin mo muna so yung, yung umbaga, maintindihan niya kung ano yung nasa board. Right? So there we go. So, as a child goes up, your requirements might change. Uh, yung grade 1 text po natin, malaki-laki, compare that to a college-level textbook, maliliit na po yun. Therefore, we need to properly assess yung ating patients regularly. Okay? And then, eventually, we need to provide tools no, for that. Okay? So, learning media, you have the following. You have regular print. Okay? So, we have regular print with low-vision devices. So, for example, may magnifier tayo, may lighting. Large print, you have Braille, and you have audio materials uh, to supplement one of the other methods. So possible po na may combination. So you have, uh, you have large prints, and on top of that, maybe pagpagod ng eyes, mag-present naman tayo ng audio file. So possible po yun. Okay? And that leads us to what we call dual learning. And so dual learning, how will you know if the student will benefit from learning both? What is both? Um, visual? Auditory, right? So, tactual, pwede rin naman. So, yung speed, siya ba ay nakakapagbasa ng bilis, mabilis o hirap siyang magbasa? If hirap siyang magbasa, then maybe we can provide alternatives. Visual fatigue, 
Okay, so kung tayo nga po nagbabasa, nagbabrowse ng phone after a few hours, pagod ng eyes, how much more if, if someone with visual impairment will do that? So maybe just after several minutes, wala na. And then prognosis. So yung kanilang eyes ay pwede mag-worsen over time. And then learning media assessment. There's a significant difference between what student can comprehend and what the student can actually able to read and print. So, alam po natin yan. So, I'm not going to uh, dive deep into reading rate, but uh, here's a computation on how to do that. Right? So, usually, we let the, the student read for, for a period of time, and then we do the math, and then, then we, go, we get the read words per minute, or the WPM. So, ito po. Yan. So, ito po yung comparison. Kapag ang grade 1 student po normally cited, ang kanyang words per minute, okay, sa isang minuto, kaya niya makapagbasa ng 60 words. Kapag ka low vision na grade 1, 10 to 30 words per minute. So, imagine gaano kabagal yung kanilang reading rate. Right? And then, gaano katagal dapat silang maturuan para matuto, and then retention is another story. So, of course, as, te as teachers, you know the drill. So, we have grades 1 to 7, and as you see, habang tumatagal, mas lumalaki yung gap dun sa reading rate. Alright? So, we're gonna skip this part because basically, it requires us to really sit down with a student and understand no, paano natin siya matutulungan. So, it's a case-to-case -case basis. And so, for Braille, uh, this is a comparison yung normal reading rate ng bata, okay, pagka normally cited, versus uh, a person using Braille. No, so, baga malaki rin talaga ang difference. So, that's why we always advocate to let's screen yung ating mga, mga sudyante. Let's identify who are those having problems with vision. Kasi most likely affected yung kanilang learning. Okay, so what are the um, most common strategies to promote reading efficiency? So, for sure, alam na alam na natin to. Repeated readings. Moving card down with the text with speed. Okay? So, kumbaga, sasanayin natin yung kanilang eye movements together with how they read, yung kanilang ability. And then, paired readings. Student teamed with good readers who reads aloud first. Low vision student reads along silently. Then, the low vision student reads passages aloud. So, marami pong available na mga strategies for us. Okay? So, yeah, There we go. We're almost, almost done. I have here writing speed. Okay, so same din ang reading speed except that this time around, we will let the student write. And so we will check. Baka mamaya, basa lang ang basa, hindi na nagsulat. So wala nang assignment na sulat si, si student. And then the referral system. So who are the stakeholders in handling low vision uh, people or children specifically? So sino-sino ba yung mga pagkakapartner? No? So we have the parents, we have healthcare workers, no, yung mga nasa communities, teachers, you guys, uh, ophthalmologists, um, low vision clinicians, so optometrists and, and ophthalmologists, and then you have, I'm sorry, you have social workers, no, so sila po yung screen sa community, sila yung nagre refer and then therapists, so other therapists or other healthcare professionals, and um, government organizations and non-government organizations. So, lahat po ng mga boxes nito, lahat po ng mga fields, tao na ito, ay nagtutulong-tulong no, to help people with visual impairment. So, it's not just like uh, an assessment and that's it. No? So, there you go. Okay. So, that being said, I think we're done. Okay. So, I'm not sure if we still have enough time, but um, if, if possible, if you have any questions, maybe we can answer some. All right, so that's all. Thank you, Po. Okay, um, we'll have the question and answer later on.
So please reserve your uh, questions. So you can just write it down on a piece of paper and just, just give it to me para it will be organized. And then if ever personal questions would be uh, asked, then we'll have you, we'll, we'll call you. So for this, uh, thank you so much, Doc, for sharing to us about uh, visual impairments. I hope you've learned a lot. Have you learned a lot? So these are the basics of understanding about visual impairment. And I hope you've, you're, you're able to take note of those um, visu uh, types of visual impairments. Now, we'll proceed to... Uh, Okay, so for this time, we'll have the guidelines in the admission of students with disabilities in higher education. And we have with us Dr. Merla Olores. Let, let me introduce to you uh, Dr. Merla. Currently, she's the Resource for the Blind um, Incorporated Education Consultant, a former Chief Education Program Specialist, Special Education Division of the Bureau of Elementary Education, Department of Education. And uh, she had a postgraduate diploma in education, specifically specializing in reading recovery uh, from University of Auckland, New Zealand. Now we now call on Dr. Merla. Thank you very much, Chair. Magandang umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning here in, New especially here in this university, because once you enter the gate you'll see the beautiful slopes, the beautiful terrain of the schools. I love that. And when you look around, you see uh, nice, nice plants, nice uh, trees, old trees, I mean. So it must really be close to heaven. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. And because of these things that I saw this morning, and I'll still be seeing later in the day, there must be, I mean, it's really nice to be admitted and study in this school, in this university, right? Okay, and so that brings me to the topic on admission. But this time it is for uh, students with visual impairment and for all other children. Can, can you see the, the, okay, because I cannot see. <laughs> Parang blind ako, Doc. <laughs> so we have here the guidelines. Guidelines on admission in the admission of students with disabilities in higher education here in the Philippines. This is a document, a public document published through the concerted effort. Better, siguro. <laughs> Thank you. This is, as I said, this document is a product of the concerted effort of the Commission on Higher Ed, or CHED, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, and the National Council on Disability Affairs, or the NCDA. Okay. Way back in, 19, in 1981, that's a long time ago, 
there was this a declaration of the International Year of Disabled Persons by the United Nations. And with that declaration, universal policies on special education for children and youth and adults with special needs were, were adapted in their uh, were adapted to suit their needs. These efforts of the UN gra uh, gradually advanced and moved towards the attainment of a barrier-free, inclusive, and rights-based society for persons with disabilities for their full participation, equality, and protection of their human rights, including the right to education. After a decade, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or the UNESCO, declared and launched the Education for All. This was to be done by 2015, but still it is ringing in our ears because it says here that every child, youth, and adult has the right to meet their basic learning needs in the best and fullest sense of the term. And, that, and because of that, they have, the, uh, they have the ability to learn to know, to do, to live together, and to be. In the Philippines, our special education uh, program or system is legally based. We have here the 1987 Constitution of the Philippines. It says here under Article 14, Section 1, it states that the state shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education and others and, and at all levels and shall then appropriate steps, shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. Remember Article 14. Now, we have also Republic Act 7277 or the Magna Carta for Disabled Persons. This is a must reading, the Magna Carta, I mean. As stated, let me read. Under, article, under chapter 2, section 12, it clearly provides that the state shall ensure that disabled persons are provided with adequate access to quality education and ample opportunities to develop their skills. It shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. To all disabled persons, I mean, it shall be unlawful for any learning institutions to deny a disabled person admission to any course it, it offers by reason of handicap or disability. Further, it states that the state shall take the, the shall take the consideration the special requirement of disabled persons in the formulation of educational policies and programs. It shall encourage learning institutions to take into account the special needs of disabled persons with respect to the use of uh, school facilities, class schedules, physical education requirements, and other pertinent considerations. Further, the state shall also promote the provision by learning, by learning instruction, especially higher learning institutions of auxiliary services that will facilitate the learning process for disabled persons. Now, this Republic Act was amended by Republic Act 9442, which focused on uh, particularly on Chapter 8, Section 12, which states that it clearly, the state shall clearly provide that educational admin assistance to persons with disability for them to pursue primary, secondary, tertiary, 
post-tertiary as well as vocational or technical education in both public and, and private schools through the provision of scholarships, uh, financial aids, subsidies, and other incentives to qualified persons with disability, including support for books, learning materials, and uniform allowance to the extent, for the, to the extent possible, provided that persons with disability shall, need, shall meet minimum admission requirements. So yung uh, Republic Act 9442 is basically for financial requirements. Now, we also have CMO number 23 or the uh, CHED Memorandum Order, Memorandum Order number 23, which as, that was still in 2000, in the year 2000. It is titled Quality Education for Learners with Special Needs. The Commission on higher education in its commitment to raise the level of educational attainment of persons with disability in the country in the country foremost it urges higher educational institutions to number one and uh, not two but uh, these are the concerns three basic concerns Admission of learners with special needs. So everyone should be admitted as long as they meet the required uh, admission uh, practices in the university. Next is inclusion of SPED programs in teacher training institutions. So if this is a training institution, then there should be courses for SPED that should be offered here. And, number, and the next one, that's the last, accessibility, accessibility of modified facilities and equipment. For example, provision of uh, ramps and, and the like. And if they are blind, then as what Doc has mentioned, Dr. Emin has mentioned, this, um, I mean, he mentioned something about facilities and equipment for the blind. Now, the aim of these guidelines or the purpose of these guidelines is to generate useful information that school personnel can use to respond to the needs of students and students with disabilities. So we hope that this, you will be informed after this and that the information will be very useful to you. Now, who are included in this uh, in this document, we have the deaf and hard of hearing. We have learning disabilities, autism spectrum disorder, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Also, the physical disabilities, and of course, those with visual impairment. Who are those students with visual impairment? Uh, the, the good doctor has already mentioned to us the different types of uh, visual impairments like totally blind, etc., and etc. But for a blind, for a, for this kind of person, it's not for them to be called technically uh, or politically or medically uh, strong state strong words, but they would just like to be called blind or person with low vision. So if you talk about blind, uh, the, the blind person, you mean here they are either totally blind, low vision, it's color blind, those with light perception. And there's the other kind, which is called MDVI, or persons uh, with uh, multiple disabilities with visual impairment. Ito po yung maaring may autism, maaring may gan o kaya... But the deaf blind is a separate group. Ayan na po yung bulag na, bingi pa. Or maaring bingi na, bulag pa. Now, this is what the blind person would like to inform us. Don't think of me as just a blind person. I am just a person who happens to be blind. Okay po? Now, 
When it comes to school admission, we say all students must be in school. Yung po yung sinasabi natin dun sa the rights of a child, the right to be educated. So, kung meron pong blind na mag-enroll, as long as they meet the requirements, then they should be admitted. Then, ALS, passer. Ano po ba yung ALS? That is Alternative Learning System. Yan po yung nasa Department of Education. Uh, and ano po yan? Kukuha sila nung ano, accreditation and equivalency uh, test. If they pass the test and they pass the admission here in this university, then they could be considered in the, in the school. Now, in accordance, another criterion is in accordance with the general admission requirement of the school. Para-pareho din naman yata yung, ano, no, yung admission requirements. Only, yun nga po, only they are blind. Now, given reasonable accommodation, they... Uh, through the administration of tests in braille format or in oral type. When they get the test, siyempre yung admission process nyo po, may oral, may written. Yung sa written, written exam po, pwede po doon yung nakabraille siya or you do it orally. Meron pong reader. Now, what about auxiliary aids and services? We have, of course, uh, the, the braille and speak, recorder player, laptop computers, and nowadays, marami na pong mga iba-ibang technically, technical devices which, can, which a blind can use. We have books and other tape references, CDs, or digital accessible information system or DAISY format. Then we also have tests and other examinations in soft and electronic copy. Others, uh, these are the services. We have qualified readers. So yung school po, kung meron kayong makukuhang qualified readers, readers for the blind, then yun po, pwedeng tumulong po yun sa uh, ating process, admission process, and at the same time, the learning process, yung instruction phase. Kung may reader, mas maganda. Then we have considerable time to finish the test. If a test in a regular I mean, taken by a regular child or a regular adult can be taken in 10 minutes. For the blind, it might take about uh, 15 more, uh, 5 more minutes or 10 more minutes as uh, whatever the case of the test is. So you give ample time to finish, for the blind to finish the test. And who are our providers or services that can be I can be asked or useful to a blind person. We have the National Library. Have you been there? National Library. Have you seen the blind section? A section for the blind. Ang ibig, mali ito pong blind sex, blind or uh, blind division. Kundi section for the blind. May nakalagay naman po doon na doon yung makikita yung mga samples of braille materials. Then, of course, we have the resources for the blind. Nandun po si ma'am, nandun, eh, nandun po si Doc, yung dalawa po, tsaka nandito po si na Marlo. Siya na po yung bahala doon pagdating sa resources for the blind. Kasi yung main function niya nga po ay sa blind. Now, we have here a list of open source or links which you can uh, browse in terms of auxiliary aids and services. Yung may mga pre-screen reader, Joe's, uh, familiar na po kayo sa Joe's, ano, Windows Eyes. We have also the Dolphin. We have the NVDA and the Macintosh Operating System. Ito po, pwedeng anuhin natin so you can browse. Kung hindi nyo po ma-copy kagad dito, you can always go to Google. Lahat po ng tanong, masasagot ni Google. Tataka nga po ako, lahat alam niya. Kahit po Tagalog ang itanong nyo, Alam niya. Minsan nga po, iniisip nyo pa lang, bakit alam na niya na iyan ang itatanong ko? Talagang nakaka-amaze po itong si Google. Hindi pa, nagtat hindi pa na itatanong, alam niya na yung itatanong mo. So, ganun lang po, GMG. Google mo, guys. Google mo, girls. Ganun. 
Now, what about the student support system? A sort of student support services. You may seek counseling, medical and health referral, and job placement assistance and other services. Ito po yung dito na sa university, for example. This is university, for example. O, kung meron pong ano dyan, syempre yung ating mga dito, yung guidance and counseling services or the student services, may bibigay nyo po kung saan nyo pwedeng i-refer yung tao in terms of job placement uh, and other services. Pati na po health. Kung meron pong problem sa mata, andito na po si na doktora, para, eh, doktor and doc, both doctors, para po mag-assist sa inyo. Kunin nyo na po yung kanilang mga, ano yun, mga... Oh, contact number para po maayos na po kung meron po kayong estudyante na naririto or in your family, meron po kayong mga, uh, you know, relatives na may ganyang problema. Now, here is the solution for uh, readers. Organizing a group of volunteers to serve as readers. Uh, that is, women here in the Office of Student Affairs and Services, pwede pong mga volunteers. Yung bang, di ba, meron nga yung, yung ano ba yun? Yung, yung social services ng mga estudyante natin, lalo na po sa, sa uh, ano yun, yung grades 11, 12, di po ba may service, parang national service, pwede pong mag-organize ng ganong grupo na sila ay magsaserve as readers. Magbabasa lang po sila para sa mga batang ay sa mga bulag. Now, and render other forms of assistance similar to what you give, to what the office gives to a regular student. Okay. Back, nag, nag, nawala yung aking ano. We have physical plant, equipment, and facilities. Sorry po, nag, nag-google na yung aking ano. Nawala na po yung ano natin. So, in terms of physical plant equipment and facilities, ang minimil lang po natin dito, kung maari po yung floor, eh parang rough. Para po yung bulag, hindi naman siya nag-slide. No, kahit na po may mga ramps pa dyan. And if possible, those, chill, those, uh, ad, those students be placed in, a, in, a, in the first floor. O yung kung saan po madali siyang uh, pumasok o mag... Uh, Maglakad. Okay. Then we also have... Sorry po, nawala. Okay. Yan naman po. Yung pagdating po sa equipment, yun na po yung na-mention natin kanina na yung mga braille readers and the like. Ngayon po, marami nang may mga cyclone. Nung na, na ano nga kami noon, that was... I think we were we were putting up a cyclone in Bowser. Eh, pare-pareho po kaming hindi marunong. So, it took us time. Meron pa kaming Zoom para lang po mag-instruct sa amin how to operate the cyclone in Bowser. But that is a very good equipment for a child with visual impairment or a child, a student with visual impairment. Now, in terms of curricular program, The curriculum that is being used for, for the blind is the same. Basically, is the same as those that are used by regular, regular students. Wala pong pagkakaiba. It's only in modification and accommodation. Yung pong, pag sinahit nabi natin modification, yung po yung curriculum, ia-adapt natin doon sa learner natin. Kung halimbawa, too much yung yung skills na itinuturo in one day, doon po sa ating blind, although they can cope with it, hinay-hinay lang po, let's do it slowly. Subtask all the skills if possible. Then, when, it, when we say accommodation, yung may nabanggit din po si Do kanina na yung mga tao doon sa likod na nakaganyan na, pansinin po natin, baka may diferensya sa mata. So, let's put them in front. O tabi ng teacher para naririnig niya at na, nararamdaman niya ano ang ginagawa ng, dun sa loob ng school. Then we have adaptations. Okay. Yun na po yung isang example dyan nga po. Yung ano natin, yung 
yung mga rooms natin, i-arrange natin para hindi po ma, yung mobility, hindi magkaroon ng mobility problems yung mga bata. Like for example, in the room, pag naka-open yung mga drawers, naka-open yung cabinet half open, tapos may blind na papasok, syempre po, disgrasya ang aabutin niya. So, kailangan po careful yung teacher pag nasa loob na ng room, sarado lahat yung mga yon Yung way ng bata, yung kanyang pathway ay malinis, maayos. Wala pong problema pag ang bata ay ganun kasi kaya po ng mga blind na maglakad because they have this orientation and mobility uh, session. Yung pong mobility na po yun, tinuturoan po sila ng maglakad ng maayos o kumilos ng maayos. Kasi meron po kaming isang nakitang, you know, uh, we've been to a certain to certain places last week, yung teacher po, pinalakad niya yung bulag, mula doon hanggang dito, eh hindi pala oriented yung bata, doon sa lugar. So, pabangga-bangga siya. Eh, pinakita pa naman niya sa amin. Di, syempre, marami kaming comments tungkol doon sa mobility, orient at saka yung orientation ng bata. Pag sinabi pong orientation, ang bulag po, kaya po niyang maglakad, kaya niya pong tumawid ng dito hanggang doon, basta po, oriented siya. Na ito pala, ilang hakbang dito, papunta doon. Ah, ito pala, ganito yung mga dadaan ng curbs. Alam po ng bata yun, magugulat po kayo. Nandun siya sa MRT, sa itaas ng MRT, at sasakay siya, bulag. Parang pag ano po, first time yung narinig, ay talaga, nung pong first time ko rin silang nakita sa MRT, nakasab na, pag ganyan ko, ay, ba't kayo nandito? Paano kayo nakarating dito? So, ibig sabihin po nun, oriented ang mga bulag kung paano umakyat sa MRT. Yun po. Then, teachers should be more descriptive. Kasi nga po, visual ang kanilang problema. So, yung pong teacher, hindi na mag-ano lang na, this is a table, this is a rostrum, and etc. You can describe, this is made of wood, this is like this, this is, the height of this is like this. Now, tactile aids and e-books or audio books. Yan po, available din po. Sana yan. Modified curriculum in physical education. Bakit po kaya special mention yung physical education? Not only for the blind, but for other, other disabilities as well. Siyempre, alam nating bulag yan. Huwag naman nating kung ano-ano ang ipagawa na hindi naman dapat. So kung ano po, imo-modify natin ngayon yung learning natin. Ay yung ating instruction ang ibig kong sabihin. So kung halimbawa po, physical education siya, instead of making them uh, yung do do physical, very physical things, you can introduce chess and the like. Yung mga nakaupo lang sila ganoon. But mind you, have you seen children who are blind, who can dance, who can do tinikling, who can do binas, yung binasuan, the one, the dancing with the glasses, pandango sa ilaw, and ano yun, yung sayaw sa bangko? It's really a wonder. Yung tinikling na lang, ano? At saka yung sayaw sa bangko, it's really a wonder how these children how can manage to do this physical education activities. So, counting modification. It takes a it takes a teacher who is very much uh, who who love the children very much because they can impart what they learn about you know physic dancing like this. Then of course revisions in methodology. Kasi nga po visual yung ating mga bata, so medyo yung methods natin for general education students can be adapted or modified or revised. Now, what about research and development? In terms of research, visual impairment or the blind is open to a lot of researches. In terms of development, that uh, we can think about development of materials, appliances, and technical aids as found in a stip as stipulated in Republic Act 7277 or section of section 
or rather, Section 17. So, pwede po tayong mag-develop ng materials applicable to them. Like, for example, the lady in Davao, nag-ano siya, nag-invent siya ng braille, braille materials. Oo, yeah, Miss Sarah. Uh, meron siyang invention na uh, tapos ipinadala niya ito sa yung sa mga inventors uh, inventors association something na nalo siya doon and now ginawa na niya yung uh, useful aid for children who are blind so marami po po tayong magagawa ano kaya ang magagawa pa nating materials para yung blind maturo ang mabuti then we uh, we can conduct researches on problems students with visual impairment experience while in school so ito po pwedeng kung Kung dun po sa mga teachers natin, yung dito, yung faculty ng uh, nitong university, pwede po tayong magkaroon ng thesis o kaya dissertations on problems experienced by a child in school, by a blind child in school. And then research areas from legal documents. Ang dami po nating international and local documents, uh, legal documents. We can take a section and Research on this. Kung sabi dito, ganito, o ano ngayon ang dapat nating i-research about this? Okay po? Okay. Now about special trainings and skills of teachers. First, syempre hindi po naman tayo lahat at the start knowledgeable about brain, about the blind. No? Yung sistema ng blindness. Hindi po natin lahat yun. So therefore, kailangan po nating magkaroon ng training skills training or a special training, I should say. As stated in BP344, Batas, Batas Pambansa 344, talks about accessibility to law. How can a child be able to do all of the, a blind child can do all of this without this accessibility law? Then we have the Magna Carta for Disabled Persons, a Republic Act 72-7, and Republic Act 9442 as amended. Stated po dito, teachers should be trained in special education. Yung nasabi natin po kanina, dun sa CMO, na yung mga schools or universities are enjoined to offer courses on special education. And by now, I think it's gaining ground. Because we have met teachers who are who have uh, may who are majors in special education. So pag napunta po sila sa public schools, for example, pagdating pag ano po doon, hindi na sila wanting an item. Yung sa public school po kasi may mga items na tinatawag. Pagpasok ng isang teacher na trained siya sa special education, let's say for example blindness, pagpasok niya po. SPET 1 siya. SPET, special Education Teacher 1. Malaki po yung sweldo nun. Katulad niya po ang head teacher. Yung sweldo nila, pareho lang. So, pag nag, uh, uh, as time goes by, naging SPET 2, SPET 3, ang mga equivalent niya na po, sweldo ng principal, principal 1, supervisor, and etc. Kanya po, mga, tapos nag, uh, between master teachers and SPET 4 or 5, Mas pinipili nila yung SPET 4 or 5 kasi mas malaki yung sweldo. It pays off kasi mahirap naman pong magturo ng uh, children with special needs. And of course, we have training of teachers on braille reading and writing, computer screen reading softwares, DAISY materials, and CCTV or closed circuit television. Lahat na po ito kailangan po ng special training. Kung ito naman po, since this is a university, may course po ba yung, yung sa higher education nyo? Course on special ed? May offer po kayo na course on special ed? May offer po na, meron po? Ay, wonderful. Ah, okay. So, meron pong bachelor at saka po may MA. Hooray for the school! Kasi nag-spearhead kayo nito. Yes, palakpak. Gandahan nyo naman ang palakpak para mas marami. Ayan. Thank you to ma'am. Siya po yung pinaka... Ha? Ah, doctor. Ay, siya po yung parang sa ano sa... Chair. 
Ayan, opo, thank you very much. Kasi that's a very good news. We will bring that to RBI and all the other all the other conferences that we are in. Na ito palang university eh, na ito may offer na bachelor's, master's, and soon doctoral. Kasi marami po, very rich ang ground ng ating uh, special education. Not only for the, pero soon, soon, sooner sana. It's not only for the blind, but for other disabilities as well. Lalo na po yung deaf and hard of hearing. Kasi po maraming, maraming successful po tayong nagtapos ng high school, pero, I mean, yung basic ed, Pero wala na silang stop na kasi wala ng universities na mapupuntahan nila na mayroong offered na ganito. Lalo yung pinuntahan po namin a week, a week ago, eh may, medyo remote lang. Remote ang place, kanya walang mga universities na nag offer ng ganyan. It's really sad. Kasi maraming, school, maraming eskwela. Ayan. Ayan. Okay. Something is wrong with this mic. Ang sagot ng tao and also with you. So, ayan po. We're glad to hear that again. Thank you. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I'd like to reiterate, thank you, ma'am, and this university for offering special education in the in the in your bachelor's program and in MA program. Okay. Okay. So yun na po yung training skills ng teacher, and with that we say. The issue of persons with disabilities getting an education is not only a manner of making them admitted in schools, but more importantly, it is all about the lifelong education, e educational experience of the person in school. Ano ba yung experience niya dito? Okay. These experiences may include making the classroom accessible and setting up reasonable accommodation on activities, services, and other programs for easier access and full enjoyment of persons with disabilities. This might also extend to the kind of attitudes administrators, faculty, students, and other school personnel must have towards students with disabilities. So, hindi lang po knowledge, kundi importante yung attitudes. Yung sabi natin kanina, na learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together, and learning to be. Yan po yung attitude. Through concerted efforts, the learning environment of students and with disabilities may be arranged in a variety of creative ways so that available opportunities for learning that would eventually help them succeed in the life can be fully achieved. And with that, uh, with these efforts that you have made, we'd like to quote Helen Keller. This is her most famous quotation. Alone, we can do so little, but together, we can do so much. And with that, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc, for uh, that information. 
and I believe somehow we, uh, we have uh, information overload, right? So we'll have a, a short intermission song to be given by Miss Shari Abilanosa and Lloyd Morado to break the ice. <laughs> 